Thanks for joining us. This webinar is sponsored by the City of Columbia's Climate Protection Action Committee, also known as CPAC. I'm Bob Petrullis, this year's CPAC Chair. CPAC is a Columbia City Council appointed citizens committee, which provides advice to the council on climate and environment related issues. We're working with the city council, the mayor, city staff, and many interested organizations and individuals to advance the city's commitment to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, prepare for the effects of climate change, and enhance the quality of our environment. Whether you live, work, go to school, or visit our city, CPAC's mission is to make this a livable, healthy, great place to be. If you're watching this webinar, chances are you're concerned about Columbia's sustainable, inclusive future. So let's keep in touch. CPAC's monthly meetings are open to the public, so please join us. Contact Mary Pat Baldoff, the city's sustainability facilitator at marybaldoff at columbiasc.gov. That's M-A-R-Y dot B-A-L-D-A-U-F at columbiasc.gov or 803-545-2722 to sign up for information and meeting notices. Thank you. Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the City, oops, City of Columbia's Climate Protection Action Committee, or CPAC's fourth quarter webinar. And I hope you are ready because we are in for a treat. Um, before we get started, because we have some great information to share, I just want to remind you about the purpose of CPAC. So we are a coalition of individuals from the city, appointees, as well as community members working together to address climate concerns within our community. So at the end of this webinar, I'll give you the website if you would like to get more information about the work that we're doing, as well as ways in which you can be a part of this great effort. So without further ado, let's get started. Now, we are happy that you have joined us throughout the year, but we, have, we are now embarking on one of the greatest parts of the year where we are having fun, food, and festivities. We are entering that part of the year where we have multiple holidays, and that also means that we have opportunities to engage in different types of events, celebrations, maybe a little bit of shopping and overindulgence. And so being that we are CPAC and we know that you are citizens that want to be responsible as well as have a good time, we're going to see exactly how we can address some of our habits during this uh, holiday season. So we're going to talk about managing your holiday waistline. And we hope that we're going to give you some great tips that allow you to have fun and be festive during the end of the year, but in a way where it's not increasing our ecological as well as wasteful footprint. So one, uh, one thing I want to uh, share is that I forgot to give a shout out to our great CPAC leader, Bob Petruis. And so again, I'm going to talk a little bit more at the end about ways in which you can be a part of this great organization, but I did want to give that one shout out. So first off, we are going to talk with the City of Columbia's Solid Waste Superintendent, who is Samantha Yeager, and she's going to give us some tips on what we can do as it relates to the management of our waste. And so if you think about we're going into Thanksgiving, we're going into Christmas and other type of holidays, there is a likelihood that we may be purchasing a lot of materials as well as trying to manage that waste. And so she's going to talk about ways in which we can do that in a society sustainable way. So, Samantha, how are you doing this evening? Thank you so much, Tamara. This is such a great opportunity to talk about reducing our holiday waste because the city does see a little spike in what we pick up during the holidays. Um, as you can imagine, the gift giving and people being at home on vacation for Thanksgiving and Christmas and other holidays, uh, we see a little bit of um, more waste. So just to give you a brief overview about our our waste collection here in the city, uh, the city does collect about uh, for 40,000 residents, we do yard trash, garbage, and recycling collection. So we've been recycling curbside since 1991. Uh, we started with those little 18-gallon bins, and we have expanded our program 
2015 to those beautiful blue 95 gallon roll carts. Now with those roll carts, we see a lot of wishful recycling uh, throughout the year, but especially during the holidays. So when we talk about recycling, we wanna make sure that we stick to our list. Um, where you can find this information, that list can be found online at columbiasc.gov um, backslash solid waste. We have our very useful Waste Wizard app. Um, that app is mobile friendly as well. It's free on iPhone and Android, and you would search Columbia SC Solid Waste. And with this app, the app and the calendar tool online, you can find your specific address. There's a search tool that you can use to say, hey, I've got batteries or I've got paint or I've got plastic bottles. What do I do with this? The Waste Wizard will tell you that. The Waste Wizard will also tell you your collection schedule. So next week when we're collecting Thursday's routes on Wednesday, you know when to put your card out. Um, and there that that third part of our, our app is that um, report a problem. So if you have a problem or a missed collection, you can always call us and say, hey, I forgot to put my card out or um, I was a little late or you missed me. We will always come back and, and service that garbage or recycling. Still, so, what goes in that blue bin? So we have our nice list. Um, again, stick to your list. If you don't live in the city, uh, Richland County, City of Casey, City of West Columbia, Lexington County, they all have great resources on their websites. DHEC also has a comprehensive list of what should be going in that roll cart on their website as well. Um, but in the City of Columbia, we want to see those empty plastic bottles with their caps on. We do not want any liquids or any leftover food. We want to see flattened cardboard, flattened cardboard boxes, magazines, junk mail, bills you might not want to pay, they can go in there too. We won't tell anybody. But we also like to see um, aluminum cans, glass bottles. We take clear brown and green glass. We still do not take blue glass. We also want to see uh, tin cans, um, soup, vegetables, all that kind of stuff. We want the cans, not your leftover vegetables. And uh, the last little piece is your, um, aside from plastic bottles, we want to see jugs, jars, and um, other containers. If the lid is plastic, keep it on there. Um, on this slide, I do have gift bags. That is not necessarily goes in your recycling cart, but we like to, that, that second R of our three R's, reduce, reuse, recycle. We want to reuse as many gift bags as we can. Um, I'll say <laughs> my grandmother was the queen of that. She had hundreds of gift bags she would just use and use and use and um, it's a great way to give something a new life instead of heading to the landfill. We also have our naughty list, big item, big ticket items we see more so during the holidays, but we do see it throughout the year. Um, any of the disposable uh, cutlery, cups, paper plates, anything like that, needs to go in your garbage. Um, those are not recyclable any time of the year, uh, but we see more parties uh, this time of the year and we see more of those disposable uh, materials. We also don't wanna see any foil pans, any foil pie pans, trays, anything like that. Uh, our recycler does not accept those, but, and with those, we also see a lot of food waste in our recycling. Our recycling should be clean. There should be no food. There should be no liquids. Um, garbage stinks, recycling doesn't. Uh, we also see during this time of year, uh, wrapping paper, tissue paper, bows. We also see a lot of string lights. Um, all of this is non-recyclable. That's why we go, I advocate for the reusable bags. Um, tissue paper, you know, the fiber is too thin to recycle. So um, it can't be recycled. Wrapping paper and bows, they, they have a lot of metallics. They have a lot of colors. Um, the metallic and glitter makes that paper non-recyclable. Um, so we say just, just keep it out. I know there's no other joy than ripping up a present on Christmas morning with all that wrapping paper and bows. And um, But if you can stay away from it, great. I know sometimes we, we just can't. And then those 
there's Christmas presents or holiday presents. We see a lot of styrofoam. Uh, even though styrofoam has a little recycling symbol on it, it cannot go in your roll cart. Um, it has to go in the garbage. Bigger, bigger pieces of styrofoam need to go out on your yard trash day with our bulk items. Um, so that's to keep in mind as well. And then we have some specialty items that you can drop off um, here at Public Works at the City of Columbia Public Works, located behind 3000 Hardin Street. You can drop off your electronics. Uh, we take basically anything that plugs in. Um, if you have a white good, which would be considered a refrigerator, um, a freezer, deep freezer, stove, washing machine, anything like that, we will also take that. It just needs to be clean of any Freon. Um, and any food or anything else that might be <laughs> in those items. Um, so electronics we take every day, they are banned from the landfill. So we like to offer that recycling option. Um, Richland and Lexington counties also have several drop-off sites that uh, our residents can take advantage of. Um, with our e-waste here, we also do take batteries. Um, those batteries are recycled along with the e-waste. So it's a great drop-off. We also do cooking oil. Um, the city has two cooking oil locations, the one here at Public Works, and then we also have another one at Fire Station 16, located off Lake Murray Boulevard. Uh, we take this um, cooking oil and we give it to Green Energy Biofuels and they turn it into biodiesel. So we, we are turning our old cooking grease into fuel. Um, Richland County does offer Richland and Lexington offer drop-offs for tires and scrap metal. The city does not offer that. Um, the residents looking to recycle tires, scrap metal could be anything from old bicycles, um, old lamps, anything you may think you want to get rid of. They do offer drop-offs for that. You can find that those locations on their website. And of course, I can't can't not mention leaf season. So the city is currently we've declared it leaf season. And so right now we are seeing all of the leaves on the ground and we are um, seeing an increase in collection in the volumes of collection. So we're actually offering an optional uh, leaf drop off locations. So the city has invested in what we call a roll off truck and we have containers that we are locating at five parks, at five different parks each week um, where residents can drop off their bagged leaves. Yes, you, we can still, still use that curbside service for leaf collection, but we are actually offering this to keep your, keep your curb lines nice and tidy, especially during the holidays with lots of visitors. Um, I know everybody gets a little frustrated when we get behind schedule, so this is just an optional, optional service that we're adding to the solid waste division. Um, the parks locations can be found on our website, in our mobile app, and um, on social media. So follow, look for those for those five different locations. The containers move every Friday. So we are moving to our second set of locations tomorrow, which will be Drew Park, Pinehurst Park, Martin Luther King Park, our Busby Street Community Center and Owens Field. So we're excited for this new program to add another, another way to keep our waste down and also to save on fuel for the city. Um, it's a great, great opportunity for residents to take care of. And with that, our biggest contributor to holiday waste would be, uh, what happened to my PowerPoint? Our food waste, which I believe our friend Ada Gordon from DHEC will be talking about, and I'm sure she will go over more specifics of this, but food waste is 40% um, of what's going into our landfills right now. So when we talk about those three R's, reduce, reuse, recycle, we want to make sure we're reducing how much food waste is going into our landfills, um, reusing our gift bags, and recycling the right things in our roll cart. So please stick to your list. Um, and with that, have a great holiday season. There's my information for any, any other further questions. You can always call our office at 545-3800. We're here Monday through Friday, eight to five.
Well, thank you, Samantha. That was some great information. But I do have a few questions for you, and I don't believe Santa will mind if you talk a little bit more about what's on the naughty list. Um, and so I assume that during this time, especially when we think about gifts, um, there's a lot of packaging that's going to be generated. So whether it's coming in cardboard packages or other large boxes, um, when we have citizens that are recycling and they're taking those roll carts to the curb, is there a certain way that we want to make sure the the waste is getting in the, the bins? And so should everything actually be put in the bin or is it allowable to have some additional items on the outside? Because I'll be perfectly honest, I've driven down my neighborhood and seen quite a bit of boxes and other materials piled next to the recycling bins. And so can you give a little directions on exactly what is gonna make it easy for those individuals that are picking up all of this waste? Absolutely. Great question. Uh, we want our cardboard flattened and in those roll carts, you can absolutely put some cardboard on the side. What we don't want is all that plastic, that plastic film wrapping, uh, any styrofoam that comes in those boxes or packaging. All of that needs to go in your garbage. Yes, it, it may be plastic or it may have a recycling symbol on it, but here in the city of Columbia and Richland County, we do not take those. Um, actually, those those recycling symbols and numbers really don't mean much to recyclers, just just to the manufacturers and chemical companies. So we want your boxes flattened. Any plastic films or styrofoam go in your garbage. And uh, if you have extra waste, you can put it out on the curb. We'll get it um, by city ordinance. We have to take up to three extra bags outside of your roll cart. Well, thank you for sharing about that. And so hopefully everyone, this will be helpful for you as you are getting different gifts and materials and are trying to do the right thing as far as segregating, putting waste in its containers as well as putting recyclables in their containers. And so again, um, the, the information was shared by Samantha. And so please reach out to her agency if you have any questions. So thank you again, Samantha. That was awesome information. So as she shared, we're going to start talking about another thing that is really, uh, I will say, significant when we're thinking about the festive holidays, and that is food. So Samantha touched on it a little bit, but we are probably all familiar with going to different holiday parties, whether it's in the office, maybe with some of our organizations, and there are great spreads. So you'll have your candy, you'll have snacks, maybe there's a end of the year holiday party. So there's a lot of food that's generated because it kind of goes along with the, the festive holiday spirit. But we also want to be mindful of not being wasteful. And so as Samantha has mentioned, uh, food waste does account for about 40% of the waste that is going to our landfills. And we can definitely do better. So next, we're going to talk with Ada Gordon, who is with uh, South Carolina or uh, DHEX, Don't Waste Food, South Carolina. And she's going to give us tips on ways in which we can have a festive holiday season, enjoying all of our great treats and other foods, but doing it in a way where we're not going to generate a lot of waste. So nice to see you, Ada. Nice to see you too, Tamara. Thanks. And thanks, Sam, for uh, giving such a good lead into food waste. Um, so let me share this with y'all real quick. Um, just to fill y'all in a little bit real quick, um, I work at DHEC's Office of Solid Waste Reduction and Recycling, and um, you might be asking yourselves why DHEC's interested in food waste, um, and honestly, it is, oh, sorry, y'all. My screen got a little excited there. So I'm going to start first. Actually, I'm going to back up the track for just a, a, a half a meter there. Um, I'm Ada. Um, I'm here because I love food. It's my favorite thing in the whole world. Um, when I'm eating breakfast, I'm thinking about lunch. When I'm eating lunch, I'm thinking about dinner. And then I'm thinking about what I'm going to bake this weekend and who I'm going to give it to. Um, so I don't think you'll ever meet anyone who cares about food quite as much as me, maybe, maybe. I mean, we can talk about it later, but anyway. So I'm here because 
food is my favorite thing. The holiday season is my favorite season because it centers around food. Um, DHEC is interested in food because we waste a heck of a lot of it uh, across the world. In the United States, 40% of what goes into the land or 40% of the food we generate gets wasted. Uh, it's about 25 ish percent of what goes into the landfill. So it's the number one thing we're throwing away. Um, and here in South Carolina, specifically, uh, our latest stats tell us that um, in fiscal year 2021, so a little while ago, but the latest data we have, uh, you, you guys can read. It's, it's pretty astounding. Um, we, we do recycle a little of it, turn it into compost, which is awesome. Um, but that's still almost a million pounds of food that's going to the landfill. And that's just an estimate, honestly. We don't go to the landfill and sort through it most of the time. So it could be more than that even. So that's why DHEC created Don't Waste Food SC. It's just a campaign where we're going around anywhere we can telling people, try not to throw so much away, try not to waste it, um, start on the front end, prevent. If there's anything that you can't prevent, let's donate it. We want to give it to hungry people. If we can't do that, maybe we can figure out how to give it to hungry animals. And then all else fails, let's figure out how to compost it. Because at least then we can recycle it and get something new out of it instead of just putting it in a landfill where it causes problems. So today we want to talk about the holiday season. Again, um, Oh man, uh, just today at work, we had our, our work Thanksgiving and it's it's amazing to see everybody get together and make all these amazing dishes that you know my family doesn't make. So everybody brought a little of themselves, but then at the end of the day, we had half of this and a quarter of this and there was a whole pie that nobody even touched because there was just so much. So what we wanna do is figure out how we can avoid some of that excess, um, you know, we want, we want the, the horn of plenty, the cornucopia, but maybe, you know, it doesn't need to be overflowing. So we're just gonna go through some few, a few simple steps, um, especially on the front end. If you're planning the meal or you have a hand in planning the meal, there are a lot of things you can do and some of them are really easy. So start out by getting an accurate head count of how many guests you're gonna have. Um, always make sure to leave a little wiggle room. You know, somebody's gonna drop in with a friend, you know, he just didn't have anywhere to go. And that's okay, we love that. That's part of the holiday spirit. Um, at this point, you also wanna decide if, you know, you want leftovers. If you're a leftovers person, I love the turkey sandwich. It is why I do holiday meals is so that I can have the turkey sandwich. Some people I know refuse and it's just not their thing and that's okay. Um, but that's the kind of thing you want to plan for. So once you get your head count, uh, try to keep in mind who you're going to be feeding. You know, if, if you're the only person in your family who likes Brussels sprouts, maybe it doesn't need to be a feature at your meal. Uh, maybe you just make a little bit and folks can try it. If they don't like it, that's okay. You'll eat the rest. Um, know if you uh, have adventurous eaters or not. My family, nope. Nope, they want the staples. They want them the way that they've had them for the past 35 years and that's cool. I'll eat my curry turkey leftovers by myself and I'll enjoy them for all of us. Uh, keep in mind your dietary needs or preferences of anybody. Nothing ruins a party like anaphylactic shock. <laughs> and then it's, if you know that there's a dish that everybody loves, like my Aunt Lee's macaroni pie, you know they're gonna eat twice as much of that as everything else. Just try and keep that in mind. If you just don't know, if you just have no idea, there are resources out there and we don't need to reinvent the wheel. So I'm gonna tell you about other people who are doing this work. Um, the NRDC and the, uh, the Ad Council have created the Save the Food campaign years ago before we even thought about doing what we were doing, honestly. Um, and they created this tool called the guesstimator. And I'm just gonna walk you through some screenshots of what I did uh, to play around with it, to, to try and show you what you can just pop online and do. If you go to savethefood.com, it's on the front page right now. And basically 
you just fill in how many uh, friends or family you've got coming over and you can do small eaters, average eaters, big eaters. Cause you know, my brother's six two and weighs a little bit more than me. So he eats a little bit more than me. And it's good to plan for these things. So once you entered those, then you sort of figure out how many leftover meals you want and account for that. What kind of meal are you having? You know, if you're having all veggies, you're probably gonna need a little more bulk than if you're having a bunch of proteins. And then you can just create your meal at this virtual table, which is really neat. Um, and it shows you this is right at the top of the page. And then as you scroll down, you can change your proteins and your side dishes, your desserts, to sort of figure out about how much of each you should make. So this is a, an unbelievable tool that will help you generate way less waste than, you know, just going and grabbing a 20 pound turkey and saying, this should be good for five people, right? Another easy resource, if that's too complicated, or, you know, in addition to that, you can do something like a Christmas meal planner, this one. I also stole from uh, Love Food, Hate Waste. They're the UK's version of all of the things we're doing here. Um, we love them. We share their stuff all the time. Uh, this planner can help you figure out what you can make ahead. So, you know, if you have some veggies that you know you're gonna cook, you can go ahead and cook those. Instead of you get to Thanksgiving day and you run out of time and those veggies don't get cooked and then they end up getting pushed to the back of the fridge from all the leftovers and then they get thrown away. Um, a little bit of planning can go a long way with these things and it can be as easy as a piece of paper. If you don't feel like printing this out, get that shopping list off your fridge and just divide it into some squares. If you're going to your, um, your company's holiday party or your neighborhood community party or your church is having a potluck, um, maybe just suggest that folks sign up, you know, tentative, even just like a category will work. That way you don't end up with, you know, four bowls of mashed potatoes and a lot of uh, belly aches and <laughs> a lot of leftovers that nobody has anything else to, to put with them. Um, obviously I highlighted desserts in red here because that's the most important food group. I do want to tell you to buy in bulk, not that kind of bulk, this kind of bulk. Um, if you go to us, there are quite a few stores in Columbia that have this option now. You can go and just buy a little bit. Uh, that, that way, if you, if you go in and you know what you need for your recipe, you can just buy the amount you need rather than buying you know, the big bag of pine nuts, which costs more than I get paid in a month. And uh, then you won't end up, you know, forgetting that you have them, um, throwing them away and wasting a lot of money as well as, you know, a really good resource. And if you're the guy who's just not good at cooking anything, you can just burn a pot by looking at it. Just bring some containers, um, preferably something that's a, a fairly sustainable, fairly reusable. Um, but as long as you're bringing something that people can put leftovers in, then that's taking it one step further. And it's not all just getting stuck with one person who will end up throwing them away as well. So who knows the best way to decide if a food's still safe to eat? Do you check the date on the label? Is that like your, your law of food? Maybe you eat a little and then wait about 30 minutes, to see how you feel. Like if you feel a little queasy, maybe we don't eat any more of that. Or just, you know, use your smell test, look at it, uh, feel it. See if it looks different or weird or smells funky. It's gonna be that smell test at the bottom. Uh, just, you, you know, when food's good, you probably know when food's bad. Um, don't be a hero. Nobody needs to be sick, but this is a good uh, rule of thumb. Use your common sense. It'll, it'll usually steer you right when it comes to something like food safety. Now when your meal's over, 
and you have leftovers and you've had a couple of turkey sandwiches and you're tired of the turkey sandwich or you really did still just end up with way too many mashed potatoes or no matter how many meals you eat you can't use all that cranberry sauce we have, we're all blessed to have technology and if we're not we have friends we uh we can go to the library you can look in some cookbooks there are tons of people who are figuring out this is an uh a, a tale as old as time i would say uh what do I do with all these Thanksgiving leftovers? I've seen nachos, pizzas, waffles, all kinds of good stuff. Um, also, I do want to point out, if you want to follow us on social media, we're on Instagram and Facebook. And from December 1st through January 1st, we will be telling you how to keep, prep, and maintain leftovers for a ton of different holiday foods. That's what we're focusing on for the next month. So if you did run out of time and you have some cans or some boxes, you know, you thought you were going to make two boxes of that stovetop stuffing and you end up with one that you just didn't use, go ahead and donate that. Um, food banks still need food after holidays. People are still hungry after holidays. We all tend to, you know, write right at Thanksgiving and right at Christmas, we go and we donate and we volunteer and then it tapers off a little bit. Folks still need help after the holidays and it's still a really good use for food, especially if you're not gonna eat it. There will always be pieces, there will always be parts. I don't love chewing on the top of a bell pepper, uh, the stem, it's just not appetizing to me. Um, you know, you can technically cook with a banana peel, but it's not really interesting to me either. So we want you to compost. Um, there are options for backyard composting. Highly recommend that. In the winter, it just kind of hangs out. You don't have to do a lot with it. Um, it's a good way to get rid of some of those leaves. So maybe, you know, Sam doesn't have to come pick all of them up or you don't have to go drop all of them off with her. But, and if you can't compost, I understand there are some people who, you know, that it's in their lease that they're not allowed to, or it's just not something that they feel like they have the time for. We're all human beings. I totally understand. Uh, save those veggie pieces, save those extra meat bits that you don't really want to chew on and use them to make stock. At least then before you throw it away, you're getting one last use out of it. So if you want some more resources, um, we have quite a few on our website. It's scdhack.gov slash DWFSC or same thing slash don't waste food SC, both will work. Like I said, a big long list of stuff there for you. Um, if there's anything specific you're looking for and you're just not finding it, please reach out. We are always open. Um, if you wanna tell me that you learned nothing today and you would like to see something else in a presentation, I'm open to that too. I'm happy to hear it. Um, again, I will encourage everyone to follow us on social media. That's where we give constant tips on date label guidance, um, donation guidance, just every time we figure out something new that we're excited about, about preventing food waste, that's where we share it. So thanks. I really appreciate the opportunity to talk to you all today. Thank you, Ada. This has been awesome. Um, one of my holiday tips is that we often pick one holiday to actually go out and do dinner. So for us, our big dinner, um, holiday dinner is going to be Christmas. So for Thanksgiving, we might do Chinese, we might do Italian, we may go somewhere. And so let everyone else do the heavy lifting, but you know, we're still able to partake in some great foods. And it also means that there isn't a lot of waste that we have to worry about. So if all of you are looking for some tips, definitely look at the resources that Ada has provided, but kind of think of some creative ways in which you can still enjoy the meals, but do it in a way that's going to be less uh, wasteful. And I have to admit, those slides were awesome. I was giggling on the side while she was presenting. <laughs> um, 
So we gathered some great information about ways we can minimize the waste that we're generating. We got some awesome information about ways in which we can still enjoy our favorite foods, but without being very wasteful. But now let's talk about another part of the holiday, which is the energy intensity and the amount of energy that we might consume. Um, so regardless of the holiday that you may be celebrating or just being festive this time of year, there's a lot of light, there's a lot of traveling that it may take take place. There's a lot of use of different equipment, whether we're running radios, TVs, or we're buying different things. And so we want to be mindful of that as well. So we're going to talk now with Stacey Washington and Chanel Williams with the South Carolina Energy Office. And they're going to give up, give us some tips on ways in which we could be mindful about the amount of energy that we're using this holiday season. So Stacey and Chanel, how's it going? It's great. How are you, Tamara? Dr. Warren. Well, I, I'm excited. This is my favorite time of year. So getting all of these tips is just right up my alley. So I'm going to give the floor to you, young ladies. Okay. Well, hello, everyone. Uh, like Tamara said, I am Shanielle Williams, and my co-host is not speaking. <laughs> oh, sorry. So Stacy Washington. <laughs> okay. And we are here to talk to you about tips for energy efficiency during the holidays. All right. Okay. So a little bit about the energy office. We are a department within the South Carolina Office of Regulatory Staff Energy Offices. And we're funded by the Department of Energy State Energy Program. As you can see, our mission is to promote energy efficiency, renewable energy, and clean transportation, which we do through a variety of avenues. And we also implement the state energy plan. So we have a little crowd interaction. Um, what are some sources of energy use during the holidays? Now, what I would like for you all to do is to use the QR code on the slide to enter in some ideas that you have about energy use during the holidays. There is a lag, so while I am waiting on the rest of the crowd or rest of the audience to participate, I'd also like to invite our fellow presenters to participate. We're going to have some interaction and some things to leave in the chat. So not only are these questions open to the crowd, but again, they're open to our fellow presenters. So let's give it a few moments and see what pops up. And I'm going to do it too, so it's not blank. <laughs> there we go. Yay. All right. Gas, road trip, oven cooking, holiday lights, travel. Oh, let's move some things around. Okay, anything else, anybody? All right, well, let's, let's move on. These are great tips or great uses, great examples to start with. But what Stacy and I are going to do over the next few minutes is give you some actual tips and talk about actual uses or sources of energy use when we're gathering and celebrating and doing all of the holiday things. Oh, oh I gotta find my mouse, sorry. Oh, there's more. Okay, it took a second. Yay. <laughs> I love the crowd participation. Thank you all. Okay. All right. So now we have a little um, story for you um, to get you uh, thinking. So Amanda is excited to decorate her new home for the holidays. 
She wanted a warm glow, so she purchased incandescent lights for her tree and battery-operated candles to place around her home. After hanging garland from the fireplace mantle, she made a fire and enjoyed the ambiance. What can Amanda do to save energy in this situation? So let's see if you can give us some examples of what you think she could do. And you can put something in the chat if you're one of our presenters. And um, we'll also look at the chat for those that are on um, YouTube Live. Use real candles, I like that. Oh. LED lights. And I don't see anything in the chat from YouTube yet. Turn the heat down while the fire is on. Use wood, not gas, in the fireplace. These are great recommendations. Energy efficient wood stove, wear warmer clothing. These are great. Mm -hmm. Let me know when you're ready to go to the next Okay, slide. you can go to the next. Okay. So you don't have anything in the YouTube. Please, if you're on YouTube, we'd love to hear your comments as well. <laughs> okay. So um, choose fiber optic decorations. And this is something that was new to me. Um, so pre-lit fiber optic trees and decorations use LED bulbs um, with the added benefits of being shatterproof, shock resistant, and cool to the touch. So this is really um, a, a little bit of a new tip. This LED, but fiber optic LED is new, new to me. Maybe not to you. All right, we have another um, opportunity for crowd participation. So little trivia question, true or false, LED bulbs are more fragile and need to be replaced more often. <clears throat> so presenters, you can obviously drop your responses into the chat. Everyone else on YouTube Live, drop your comments or your responses into the chat as well. Stacey, are you seeing responses? I do. I have two on YouTube Live that say false. Okay. All right. I'm here for it. And that is correct. So LED lights actually use less electricity than incandescent lights. And that's one of the quick and easy energy saving tips that we at the energy office like to recommend for people to do. Just swap out your light bulbs for LED lights. And during the holiday season, obviously, you want to have LED Christmas lights or tree lights or decorating lights, house lights, whatever you'd like to call them, <laughs> instead of the incandescent lights. And now let's talk about the room lights. Um, you can conserve power by using the lights on your Christmas tree to light the room instead of turning on the light fixtures. I know my um, children love to see that nice glow of the Christmas tree rather than using um, the light. It always just makes it feel nice and cozy. And you can save energy by doing that. So that's just another thing to think about during the holidays. You have all these extra lights on. Maybe you don't need all the other lights that you normally use. Mm-hmm. Excuse me. Uh, you can also put lights on a timer. I know it's very nice to have your holiday lights on all the time and really get into the mood, get into the to the holiday spirit. But in actuality, that is a drain on your energy. So a simple way to fix that is to set timer set a timer to turn the lights on when it gets off that timer could be electronic or it could be a human who comes in and turns the lights on when it gets dark 
um but it's it's good to remember to also keep lights on for less than six hours again just another simple energy saving tips when it comes to your to your lights okay more crowd participation and i'll go a little slower this time since we are getting some youtube live interaction <laughs> and there's that lag so it's time for a feast and all your friends and family are coming over what are you making we all know ada is making curry turkey salad but just for herself <laughs> not for the rest of her family <laughs> and with that how can you save energy during holiday gatherings now we're gonna give you those tips, but I want to hear what ideas you all have, um, anything that might come to mind about how to save energy while you're having those moments of fun and fellowship and friendship and enjoying one another's company. So we did get some in the chat here. Um, Tamara said she would make cookies, and Sam said uh, grilling and less baking. Oh, grilling! Yes, it sounds like my family. They're having seafood. <laughs> gathering one gathering in one room to avoid people and a lot of rooms in the house. That's a good idea. Mm -hmm. That's a great idea. We do have a comment on YouTube. Do you have any recommendations for reusing the old string lights instead of giving Sam's team more work by throwing them away? Huh, that's a great question. Um, I guess it might depend on whether or not you want them lit. <laughs> you could always hang lights <laughs> someplace if you just like that, like the way they look. But um, and you yeah, can make lamps. I know someone who used to make um, table old wine bottles and put uh, Christmas tree lights in them and make lamps out of them. Oh, that's a great idea. And then another on the YouTube, some of the same tips that Ada mentioned about wasting less food. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is for the questions that we have. And then um, for how can you save during the holiday gatherings? and turn down the heat to take advantage of the people heat and residual heat from the kitchen appliances. Some more YouTube comments, thank you. Yeah, thank you all. It sounds like you are in a great mindset for how to save energy and you are prepared. Because and another comment if um, for the lights, if safe, that can be made into jewelry. <gasps> oh, I need to look that up. <laughs> I'm here for it. <laughs> okay, are we ready to move on, Stacy? Okay. Now we'll um, talk a little bit more about one of the comments that was in the chat about um, heating and cooling. So the biggest energy users in the home are heating and cooling the air and heating and cooling the water. So one of the things you can do is let the sun in. You can open the drapes and shades during the day. Um, to use that um, light from the window, like the greenhouse effect, to warm up the, the home. Um, and at night, close the, um, the drapes and shades to cut down on drafts from the cold windows. So those are ways that you can use that natural um, heat to save on the, on the bill. You can also lower the storm thermostat when having guests over. So a little before they come over, you can lower the, the thermostat because you know that body heat is going to cause the the um, temperature to rise. So go ahead and plan and make sure you're taking advantage of their body heat so you don't have to use your heat. Um, and if you're entertaining, you can leave the door oven door open um, after you finish making that turkey and all those sides um, if you need some little extra warmth in the home. And then you can also be an energy sav savvy shopper. So basically, 
when you are purchasing gifts for either yourself or others, be sure that you are purchasing ones that are energy efficient, recyclable, or made of natural products. You can also reduce waste by investing in rechargeable batteries, which could be any number of items <laughs> that make great stocking stuffers, um, especially if you're giving a gift that requires batteries. Even if you are buying things like large thing, making large purchases like appliances or lawn equipment, those are great opportunities to be more mindful of your energy related purchases and make sure you are buying something that's energy efficient. Okay, so we have a couple of resources that I think will be dropped into the notes or the chat in YouTube Live. But if you want more information on energy saving tips, you can go to any of these links and there are plenty of tips on them are on those websites. And that's our information. I, again, am Chenille, and then you also have Stacy's information. And we encourage you to follow us on all the platforms, both Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. So you will get more information about energy efficiency, clean energy, clean transportation, renewable energy, all things energy from the Energy Office's social media platforms. And thank you. Well, thank you very much, Chanel and Stacy. That was great information. Um, I would say if some of you are of a certain age and remember the Charlie Brown Christmas, it feels as if we're coming full circle. So Charlie Brown insisted on having a natural tree, but who knew that having a pre-lit tree might have some little energy savings there? He might not agree, but hey, this is of a different time. So we kind of make sure that we'll do, we'll have a less of a, a footprint. So again, thank you very much for those great tips about energy savings. So next, we're going to talk about something that may be inevitable as we're hitting the holiday season, and that is the amount of stuff that we generate. Um, so we've talked about ways in which we'll manage our ways, how we can reduce the amount of food that we're wasting, even be more mindful about our energy efficiency. But just with the holidays, it's likely that we're going to get some different gifts, get some items that we've been wanting, some items that we need. And that may add a little bit more clutter to our homes. And so what better way as we're talking about minimizing our waste and just being mindful is thinking about how we can actually reorganize these different items, either those things that we currently have in our homes or different spaces, or as we're going to get new gifts or materials. And so now we have the pleasure of talking with Kim Vincent of Resolve Organizing, and she's going to give us some tips on how we can actually enjoy this holiday season, possibly all of the new and great things that we're going to get, but not add a lot of clutter in our home. So how are you doing, Kim? I'm great. Thank you. And I am thrilled to be here with all these folks who um, work day in and day out to um take good care of our environment. And I'm also proud to say that our business, my business Resolve Home Organizing, um, we do our part to try to keep as much as possible out of the landfill because what we really spend most of our time doing um, before the reorganization starts is just as you said, Tamara, is the decluttering. And um, as a matter of fact, our byline is reduce, reorganize, re or um restyle recreate and that reduce is just like we hear it when we were talking about recycling and solid waste management um we do our best to, and while we're at it to educate our clients about how you can declutter and not clutter the environment while you're at it um i always suggest to our clients that they kind of get ready for the holidays by making room in their home, making space in their home 
for the influx that is going to be coming. Um, so this would be the time of year to start. As a matter of fact, um, Thanksgiving vacation, when the kids have those few days off, is a good time to say, if you want Santa to come, we need to be able to make room. So let's go through your closet and your toy box and the shelves and decide what you are no longer playing with. Um, and the sooner the better, because then those things can be donated to Toys for Tots or a local thrift shop or any of the other wonderful organizations that help families before the holidays. And so not only are they getting ready to welcome Santa Claus and family and all of the surprises that they bring, but they're also helping other families do the same. So um, this is this is a good time to do that. Um, and while the kids are home from school, you've got a little extra time to do to do it with them, to get them involved in it, which I think is important. Um, so I actually prepared also to talk a little bit about the surprises that you'll be bringing to your family and friends and how to do some sustainable shopping and wrapping um, and to not at the same time fill your house and other people's houses with clutter. I work in homes of all shapes and sizes with all kinds of clients. I cannot tell you how often people say, I am never gonna use that, but I got it from my mother-in-law and I'm afraid to get rid of it. Um, or I, what, you know, or I'll be helping someone organize a closet and I'll say, this doesn't look like the rest of your style. And I'll say, I know I got that as a gift from so-and-so and I don't know, I don't know, I tried it, I, it's not my style. So we wanna take steps ahead of time to, to be thoughtful about the gifts and in, in making sure that we do a good job of matching people's interests. At the same time, we want to, um, we can make good choices about the gifts as well. So we may wanna do some thinking outside the box, so to speak, when it comes to um, the shopping and the wrapping. So I'm gonna do a little bit of show and tell in a minute when it comes to the wrapping. But in the meantime, to when you sit down, I know I'm really getting to shopping mode right about now and start to make lists and think about what should I be buying for different people. Right now we're working at a client's home and in her garage, I found a, giant shopping bag full of um, really nice fleece blanket throws. You know, they're wrapped in the ribbon. You just see them at Kohl's and all the other different stores. It's such a common hot item for the holidays, maybe teacher gifts, neighbor gifts. She must've had 20 of them. So I was like, what, what's, what's going on with these? I bought them last year to give us Christmas gifts. I got sick before the holidays, never got to do the those gifts for neighbors and teachers and friends. So there they are. So the first thing I want to say, and I said to her, your shopping is done for this year. She said, I forgot they were even out there. So the first thing to do is check your own stash. I know that sometimes during the year, I'll see something cute that's at a great price or reminds me about, of someone. And I buy it and I put it aside in that safe place to um, give to a friend or family member when a holiday comes. And then sometimes at Christmas, I get so involved in the shopping, I forget that I already bought that person something. So before you start the list and before you start the shopping, check your stash. If someone that, that sweater that's hanging in your closet that your mother-in-law bought and you're like, I'm never going to wear it, maybe you can re gift it. So start with that. And those are gifts that you've already made. You don't have to run to the store. You don't have to ship them. They're already in your possession. And there really is nothing wrong with re something if it's still in good shape, I think. Um, but if you are going to go shopping, do consider shopping local so that you can conserve energy in terms of driving around and or the extra cost of shipping goods as convenient as it could be to order online, shopping local has so many benefits, really great for our community and the planet. Um, whether you go to Soda City and there's lots of vendors you can shop from, or right now 
if you check your Facebook events, it's full of every church's Christmas fair and festival and the, every weekend is packed with opportunities to shop local right now. Um, another great way to shop sustainably is to shop secondhand. Um, I'll tell you this, I would not buy my mother something secondhand. There's some people who you just know are not going to appreciate it, but there, you know, there are other folks on your shopping list who would love something that you could pick up from an antique mall or from a, a thrift shop. And, and thrift shops also have plenty of items that still have are, are, have their tags on them from the original um, merchant. So, um, and we're lucky to have great places just up the road at like Little Mountain Antique Mall and Podunk Collar is another great um, place with not just antiques, but great pickings for holiday giving. So I recommend that. And um, and don't be afraid to give gift cards or money. Um, my teenagers, when asked what they want for Christmas, they say gift cards and you kind of go, oh, I'm gonna miss them opening stuff under the tree. Think about, you don't have to wrap it in a great big box and it's what they want. And it again is, is a, a great way to do some sustainable um, holiday shopping not buying someone something that might end up just sitting in the closet or immediately going in a landfill. Um, so that those are some tips for giving stuff, but you've probably read lots of articles or seen stories um, online about giving experiences. Um, I think since COVID, we have really realized how valuable that time we can spend outside of our home, <laughs> exploring or visiting a museum or spending time with family and friends, how, how important that is to us now. And the gift of experience does allow people to, to do that. And again, there is no wasteful product that has to go with it. So memberships, Riverbank Zoo, the Columbia Museum of Art, State Museum, Adventure, I mean, all of them have memberships. If you know someone goes to a gym, you can renew their gym membership. Or if they're Costco shoppers, you can renew their Costco membership. Or, or if you think they would benefit from something like that, you can start up a new membership for them. State parks have a, have a pass, and that's a great gift is to buy someone a pass for the state parks. Or I live um, close to Saluda Shoals Park and buy someone a park pass for the year. Um, you've set them up for so many great opportunities to make memories with their families. Um, tickets, theater tickets, movie tickets. When it comes to um, events and experiences, I recommend you check Groupon. Sometimes they will have great deals on escape room for, for eight or um, tours, walking tours, ghost tours. Things that you might not even realize on the surface are, are around, but Groupon will have great deals on them. And it's a good way to, to, to help your family and friends do something different for a change. That, again, a new experience. Um, and the last, of course, of which is, it's kind of fun to put together a combo of those things and include yourself in the gift. So you're kind of giving the gift of time with you. So maybe it's a, you know, a, a, a trip to the museum and a gift certificate for lunch and then um, gift certificate to go and have a pedicure and it's a girl's day out for your best friend. It's a great gift. I mean, I would love that more than a new coffee mug um, or I don't know, those, those fun but unnecessary things we give to our friends. Okay. The other thing is the gift of service. Gift certificates for massage or the salon. Um, think about gift certificates to give someone a gift certificate to get their car detailed. Yeah, I love that idea. <laughs> gift certificate to get their house pressure washed or their windows washed. Um, 
even businesses that you wouldn't think, you know, their gift card isn't hanging on the big rack at the grocery store. Like if you call and say, I know my friend would love this service. Can I buy it in advance? Sure. They'll trust me. I've, I've done that with our businesses. I'll create a gift certificate for you to give to someone. So um, the, the Grubhub or whatever they all are, all those places have some kind of a membership deal that the person doesn't have to pay the delivery fee. A teenager who's a college student would probably love something like that. Um, so those are just some different ideas um, that you think outside the box for folks. Um, so now let's talk about some sustainable wrapping of gifts when you decide that you do want to give stuff the the get it's something that needs to go into a package um so i kind of think of these i'm going to give them to you in um in a list of least to most earth friendly i had to check my notes and like i said do some show and tell so this is great but it's at the top of the least earth friendly but at least by gift wrap that's made from recycled paper. That's the least you can do. It's a little more expensive, but not as much as it used to be. The next on that you could do is maybe use gift bags. And as um, I think Samantha said, her grandmother reuses and reuses those gift bags. We do as well. So a tip on that, you know, a typical gift bag that you could buy at your local department store when you first get it, some of them will have this little tag on it. That's great. But when you reuse it, you need to put a tag on it. And some people just, these are maybe harder to find than those stickers that are easier. So I always recommend and tell my kids that after they wrap the gift, uh, the name tag sticker on the tissue paper, because now you can reuse this bag again once you take this off you can use this bag again. So that's a little tip for how to reuse bags. Next on the list of um, earth friendly is to, instead of buying traditional holiday gift wrap, you can buy in great bulk quantities, um, butcher paper. So the brown craft paper, or the white butcher paper, and a roll will last you for years and years and it makes great gift wrap. And you can challenge your, if you've got little kids, especially, they will, you, we're gonna decorate our own gift wrap this year and let them color on it and draw on it. And grandparents and family and friends will see that as maybe the best part of the gift is your your kids' artwork or your artwork um, or messages of, of holiday greetings that you can scroll across the, the gift wrap. You can buy that stuff um, in bulk. So that paper can be recycled. That's the difference between the gift wrap and this idea is this paper can, paper can be folded up and put in the recycling bin, the butcher paper. Um, and another idea is to reuse boxes. So you're, you know, you can hope that the person who receives it will reuse it again, but at least give your boxes another life. So, to, you know, we all have a million Amazon boxes. I, I, I say we all, this is based on what I see in clients' homes. So you can, of course, the way that you typically probably break down a box to recycle it is you open the top and the bottom, but you can then carefully they have like a glued edge. You can carefully open the glued edge. Then, this isn't just for shipping. This is for wrapping a gift to put under the tree. Is you can then flip it inside out and then use tape or glue, probably tape, to close this side and then reassemble your box. And again, maybe while it's open, say to the kids, hey, this is the gift for grandma. You decorate it because it's this is what what the first thing grandma is going to see. So um, it gets the kids involved. It gets it helps teach the next generation the value of reusing and recycling. And it's extra super extra special and it's very 
another step in sustainability. Um, I have been happy to find that even on Amazon, and I learned recently Hallmark in their big Hallmark stores where they have beautiful gift wrap, that's generally very expensive, that they're also selling, um, in addition to regular gift bags, like I showed you, they're selling um, fabric gift bags. So these can, of course, be reused. This one has a little drawstring. Um, this one I actually made years ago. And we made all, out, lots of Christmas fabric. Anybody can sew a bag, you know, inside out, start with it, put the fabric inside out, you sew up each side and flip it over. You don't even have to do the cute drawstring. You can just tie um, some ribbon around the top. And I, when, when I give these, this is kind of a big tag in comparison, but I create a tag. Let me see if I can, there's my show and tell. So it says Merry Christmas and it says to and from, please reuse or return this bag so it can bring joy again next year. So you're asking the person, reminding the person that they um, either should give it back to you or they're welcome to reuse it themselves. And um, so again, whether you make your own or buy them, you can use, I think I made these the first year we got married and we've been married 29 years. So those have been around a while. Um, if you send gifts from online sources, a lot of them use sustainable gift wrap options. This was Amazon's gift bag a couple of years ago and I continued to use it. <clears throat> With addresses them. And um, I did just find a tutorial online about how to sew these bags as is. There's also the possibility of wrapping your gifts in fabric. Um, Christmas fabric is plentiful in the fabric stores right now. And there's actually um, a Japanese art of wrapping with fabric and there's a great book online that you can buy at Amazon that's called wrapping with fabric and there's all kinds of tips um also you can use items that don't have to be wrapped at all so this was you know a cookie box and I can put a t-shirt in this as a gift and it looks great just as it is under the tree baskets or mason jars or other creative means for packaging up your, your gifts for your loved ones. So thinking outside of the box, both with your, your shopping and your wrapping. So there are some ideas. And the best part is after it's all been opened, you don't have a huge pile in your living room around the tree. You go from having a beautiful living room to what looks like a garbage heap. This will help you ease right into the rest of the day without having to spend an hour cleaning up. So that those are some of the tips. I hope that you found them helpful. Well, thank you, Kim. That has been very helpful. And as you were kind of talking about the last few items, I think there's quite a few things that we likely have in our homes, possibly a lot of extra cardboard boxes or even nice material, uh, nice fabric materials or bags that we can use. And so you actually get two gifts. You get the mm -hmm. gift that was purchased as well as you get that new package that you can either use for yourself or you can give to someone else. So great mm -hmm. tips and we definitely appreciate that. Mm -hmm. So I will say we have had a great hour of information that's been provided that has been relevant to all aspects of having a festive holiday season. Again, we've talked about, you know, there's food that we want to enjoy, there's gifts that we want to give, but how can we do it sustainably? And so all of our guests have provided a lot of great information. But what we want to do now is um, let you know about some events that are going to take place in the Midlands area that you can attend or be involved in that can also help you minimize your waste um, this holiday season. And so first, I want to talk about an event with one of my good friends, Jane Hiller. 
Um, it is the Environmental Education Ornament Event. And so Jane, if you can share information about our organization, EEASC, and what this event is all about. Hmm. Hi there. Can you make sure that you can hear me? We sure can. Okay. All right. So I'm Jane Hiller, and I uh, coordinate a program called the South Carolina Green Step Schools for an organization called EEASC. Um, EESC is the Environmental Education Association of South Carolina, and we are a group of formal and informal environmental teachers and communicators. And what we do is teach about conserving, protecting, and restoring precious natural resources. We work with schools and communities um, across South Carolina, across our state. So um, EESC loves to do outreach uh, programs. Uh, we do a lot of them and we love doing them here in Columbia and uh, Richland County and Lexington County. Um, and we are going to have one of our um, events coming up this Saturday. It's called an upcycled light bulb hol uh, holiday ornament workshop. Uh, so somebody was earlier was talking about what do you do with old holiday lights or regular lights? Well, we're going to turn them into fun holiday ornaments uh, from old light bulbs. So this is going to be at Gardner's Outpost on Franklin Street. It's this Saturday uh, at a, from 11 to noon. And you get to come have fun and learn. We're going to also be talking about uh, energy conservation like we did tonight. And while you're doing this, you're going to be supporting environmental education in our local schools. So we do have a few spots left um, that, for this event. Um, and you can find that at eeasc.org. And uh, you can register there. Uh, we also will be doing a lot of other events uh, during the year, so just watch for EEASC. Um, when I talked to Mary Pat about, uh, actually, Mary Pat and I are working together on this workshop on Saturday, so come have fun with us. But when she told me uh, the topic of the um, program tonight, uh, I said, oh, that reminds me of some song lyrics that I wrote a few years ago called Keep the Holidays Green. <clears throat> now, I write lyrics much, much better than I sing, but I'm uh, I'm going to inflict upon you my singing uh, anyway, just, just for the fun of it. So uh, here it is, and feel free to sing along if you like. Goes like this. <clears throat> Deck the halls, it's November, but we all must remember each little act keeps us on track in our dream to keep the holidays green. Buy a tree that can be planted later. Use LEDs to make the season bright. Share your food with some hungry neighbors, no matter if they walk or crawl or fly. Cups and plates, please no plastic. If they're glass, that's fantastic. Flatware is steel and linens are real in our dream to keep the holidays green. Plan a meal that's local and organic. Never shop without your grocery tote. Gifts should please both people and the planet and pass along that extra winter coat. Deck the halls, it's November, but we all must remember, reduce and reuse, recycle or lose our dream to keep the holidays green. So if you would like the lyrics for this, please contact me or if you have any other questions about environmental education, about uh, how we work in our communities and in our schools, feel free to contact me at janehiller at gmail.com and you can pass along those lyrics to somebody who can actually carry a tune. Thanks. 
That was amazing, Jane. And I must say, the Grammy nominations for 2023 went out, and I don't understand how you were not on the list. <laughs> so, everybody, let's make sure that Jane gets on for 2024. <laughs> But thank you so much. And again, if you all can come out, Jane said there is a few spots left. So go to www.eeasc.org. Dot org. And if you want to get one of those spots, please feel free, as well as reach out to her to get those awesome lyrics. So thank you, <laughs> Jane. Um, and so that's not the only thing that's taking place uh, this holiday season. So obviously, that is excuse me, uh, that's taking place this weekend. But as we're moving forward, um, we're almost to getting into December. And some of you are going to be getting those Christmas trees or holiday trees. And so we want to address that as well. So one of the big events that we have in the Millens area is the grinding of the greens. And we have Laura Blake or with Keep the Millens Beautiful to provide more information about that. So hello, Laura, can you share with us what is the grinding of the greens? Certainly, um, we are very excited once again to have the grinding of the greens. We have been doing this for many, many years. And the grinding of the greens is one of our recycling programs. Uh, the mission of Keep the Midlands Beautiful is to engage, inspire, and educate the Midlands to um, invest in the community through litter prevention, recycling, and beautification. I'm the core programs coordinator, and this is always one of our favorite events. So basically from December 26th, the day after Christmas till January 19th, uh, we will be collecting trees at 10 area locations in Lexington, County, Richland County, and the City of Columbia, along with our partners at the county level and the city level, and our wonderful grinding partner, Alpine Tree Care. They've been with us several years now uh, to grind those trees and turn them into some yummy smelling mulch that will be available to residents in Richland and Lexington counties to pick up. And we will have a loader out at two locations at the South Carolina Farmers Market and at Seven Oaks Park on the 21st of January. And we will be giving out this mulch free until it's gone. So we encourage you to drop off your live Christmas trees, no tinsel or lights, no wreaths, please. And we will collect them and then grind them on the 20th and have that mulch available for you. So we are very, very excited. And this information will also be available on our website shortly. Uh, we just confirmed all of the locations today. So we will have it out there tomorrow. And we hope that everybody will participate. This is for residents only. So if you're a grower um, or a retailer, if you have trees and would like to contribute those, please contact us directly and we will arrange for that. So most of the trees will end up being turned into mulch, but some of the trees will also be turned into fish habitat or used for erosion control. So we hope that um, you will participate. Thank you so much. And we do have a couple of other holiday announcements to make, if I could take a moment. We have our gala for a greener Midlands coming up. And that's on December 6th, where we celebrate our volunteers and our partners. So uh, go to our website for that. Um, speaking of gift giving, um, we are happy to accept donations. So if you would like to make a gift in lieu of an actual present, but make a donation in honor or in memory 
of a loved one, we're happy to accept those year-end donations. And Giving Tuesday is coming up. It's a great time to do that. And as you're sprucing up the neighborhood for the holidays, there's nothing like doing a year-end litter pickup. So we're here to provide you with all of those supplies to do a litter pickup before you decorate the neighborhood. To learn more about what we do, please visit it, us at kmbsc.org. And if you'd like to sign up for our newsletter, email us at info at kmbsc.org. Thank you so much. Well, thank you so much, Laura. I appreciate that. And so again, for all of you who are going to be having those natural trees uh, this holiday season, please take advantage of that great opportunity. And again, this is another way in which you can get a second use. And so not only will you be able to enjoy your Christmas or holiday tree, but you can also get the mulch from it as well and use it for whatever purposes you would have around your home. So all in the same vein of managing our waste this holiday season. So we have actually come to the end of the webinar. And I don't know about you, but this has been great because I've gotten some awesome tips for the holiday season that I love the most. So we've discussed ways in which we can manage our gifts. We've talked about ways in which we can enjoy the foods that we love, but without being wasteful. We talked about ways in which we can actually minimize our energy use while still having fun in our homes or as we're visiting others. We've discussed how how we can actually um, package our materials in a more sustainable way as well as declutter um, our own homes. And we can take advantage of some of the events that are taking place in the Midlands area. And so what a great way to start off the holiday season by being festive, having fun, but know we can do it in a very sustainable way. And so please reach out to all of these individuals or these organizations to get good information. And then please, as we're in the gift, give, gift giving season, share that information with others. And so I also mentioned at the beginning of the webinar that if you would like to be involved with CPAC, or if you want to learn more about what we're doing, you can visit us at columbiasc.gov. Once you click on that site, you will look under departments and under there, there will be information about CPAC. And so again, if you're interested in being a community partner or just learning about the addition, additional um, uh, com um, sorry, campaigns or initiatives that we're working on, you can get all of that information there. So on behalf of CPAC, I wanna thank all of our great panelists uh, this evening. A lot of good information was shared. And again, if you would like to get more information, you can reach out to them individually and they would definitely share it. I wanna leave it on this part. Um, there were two statements that I heard this evening that really stuck out to me. One was by the experience. And so thinking about a lot of the materials that we buy or generate, use this season to actually either have a great experience with your loved ones or friends, or think outside of the box as relates to what we're going to or the, the waste that's being managed. And then one that I thought was awesome was garbage stinks, but recycling doesn't. So that was a cute statement and hopefully we can take that to heart. So again, on behalf of the City of Columbia's Climate Protection Action Committee or CPAC, we thank you for joining us for our quarterly webinar. And as we go into this holiday season, we do ask that you remain safe with your friends and your loved ones. Have a joyous season, and we look forward to bringing you more great information in the upcoming year. And so happy holidays on behalf of all of us. Have a good evening and good night.